Massey. And guess what? Tonight, I'm paying a tribute to one of the oldest foods known to mankind. I'm talking about beans. We got a real blazing saddle on our hands tonight there, honey. I've decided to dig in the old bean bag of recipes. And uh, for a starter, I thought maybe we would do a little black bean cake with a saute of rock shrimp and mole sauce. Yeah. It's like they're doing down the street. Well, we could do also a, an incredible split pea soup. I'm talking delicious with roasted fennel. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Get ready, babe. Because tonight, B is for beans. And it's all happening right here on Emerald Live. How you doing? Oh, hey, honey. What's going on, guys? I love this. I had to come over here and check this out. I just kind of like want to sit on your lap right now. Anyhow, kind of I got them in uh, sort of little regions over here. And of course, the American, you know there are over 7,000? I mean, there are over 100 types of beans, but over 7,000 years of history when it really started with the Indians. Black-eyed peas, Turtle beans, also called black beans. Split peas, probably the most popular ones in America. These are called scarlet runners. We're going to talk about those later. Pinto beans, of course, more green split peas. Canelli beans, used in a lot of Tuscan, Italian types food. Everybody has sort of their own little bean, you know? Fava beans, Hilda would be like happy, happy right now. <laughs> Oh, she'd be happy, happy. She'd have a pot of those farvish beans on there. Chickpeas. And then you can see that we start moving into more of the Middle Eastern cuisine. How about Asian? I mean, these are azuki, or probably the most popular fermented black beans. Huge in Asian cuisine. And then as we start going into more Middle Eastern, as I said, and Indian cooking, various types of lentils like yellow lentil, red lentil, just unbelievable. And that's exactly what we're going to do, is we got an unbelievable show tonight. We're kicking it up on notches to unknown to mankind. Yeah. Hey, this would be a good time for you to go get whatever your favorite bean is when we come back. Pea soup, stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. So I really want to say, not only to everybody here in the audience, but I want to say to everybody out there watching the Food Network that we are just, like, so thankful and appreciative of all the mail, both email and through the mail itself and the website and everything that we get from you guys. I really, really appreciate it. So uh, we thought we'd kick it up a couple of notches. This is the old e-board right here. And uh, we've been actually getting all of these mail. I mean, look at this, Singapore and all around the country. Yeah, amazing. I got a little question right here for, as in B is for beans, there's some folks from uh, California, Jim and Sally and a whole bunch of people. Dear Emerald, I love making chilies and all sorts of dishes with beans. But what's better, canned or dried beans? Well, later on in the show, let me tell you, we're also going to talk about whether you should soak them I know we've joked a bunch of times about that, whether you season them while you're cooking them. You know, that seems to be a big mystique right there. Then the other thing is, well, is fresh better? Is canned better? Well, preferably, I don't really like canned. I mean, that's just a, a preference. I don't really, I'd rather use dry if I'm going to use canned because you can absolutely bring them back uh, and flavor them any way that you want. I believe that this canned thing is holding in all that nasty gas stuff or whatever, and that's just me. 
But if that nasty gas stuff don't bother you, hey, go buy a couple of six packs, you know, and don't bother me. <laughs> hey, thanks for writing in. And all of you guys, if you want to write in and uh, check out our e board or our email, go to the www.foodtv.com. All right. Simplicity. Simplicity. Now, you know, split peas. Uh, basically, uh, either green or whatever, they're, they're done, they're dried. And then when they're dried, then they're split at the seam, which makes them split. So they're not actually grown split. People think that they just, like, pop out of the ground split. <laughs> I'm split! No. <laughs> but now that it's split, basically, I'm going to show you um, one that I'm going to do uh, that you can keep vegetarian. Uh, or you can kick it up a few notches. Because generally, a lot of pea soups, people think, that they have to have ham bones in them for them to taste like anything, or at least some ham, or bacon, or salt pork. And we know that pork fat rules. However, however, if you don't want to do that, that's okay. I'd like to start with a couple of onions like this, chopped up in some oil. This is how simple this thing is. And uh, of course, as you guys know, we're really cooking here. This is like real recipes. We're not like pulling stuff out of the sky. Garlic cloves. I know. It's like, oh, oh well, maybe later. Basically, you want to chop them up. If you don't, no problem. Just throw them in whole, just like that, because we're going to end up pureeing the soup, okay? So it's like, don't lose any sleep because we didn't chop up the garlic. Pimentum weather, as Hilda would say, better known as crushed red pepper. Kick it up a few notches. Now, just like anything else, you want to season it. At least I want to season it. Some of you out there, you don't want to season it. You're not going to offend us here because we're live in New York City. So, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You want to cook those onions out with a little salt and that crushed red pepper, okay? Guys, smelling good already, right? These are my friends here, Wesley and... Um, I'm sorry, Leonardo. Excuse me. I was going to say Leonard. It's Leonardo. Now, you guys are interested in food yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. What's, uh, what's, your, what's your background with it? Well, I prefer to be, uh, I really want to be a pastry chef. I have a lot of love with sweet, sweet tasting food. Excellent. And everything. Excellent. Well, good luck to you. And how about you? And I want to be a chef. I work love that. Work. All right. Well, welcome, guys. We're glad to have you here, okay? All right. So, look, you saw how simple this is. You want to add bay leaf, add bay leaf. You want to add thyme, add thyme. Basically, I've got simple ingredients in there. Now is when I'm going to add the split pea soup. Uh, excuse me, split peas. I'm using water. I'm going to keep it vegetarian. Just going to use some good old H2O right from the uh, river here. Of course, we strained it like three or four times, you know. Bring it up to a boil. Let it simmer for about 30 minutes is what we're going to let it simmer for. This is basically what we have in 30 minutes, as you can see right here. You let it cook, the uh, split peas begin to start breaking down. Look at the garlic. You see how nice and sweet and tender that is? You see how nice and sweet and tender that is? All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is this. You always, when you're doing this, even with a good gumbo, yeah, before I was like, eh, you know, but these don't digest well. Trust me, okay? <laughs> Can you imagine if you had a camera down there and you saw this thing coming down the pike? Man, you'd be like, get out of the way! <laughs> so you want to, like, get rid of this thing or take it out when you're done. Whatever. Give it to your neighbor or whatever. <laughs> so, exactly. There. Lick this for a while. <laughs> now... Don't go there. G, G, G. Now, I got some fennel. This is how we're going to kick this soup up a couple of notches. Little fennel, just clean finocchi, right? Slice down real thin like this. Wow, we're building like a rocket ship. Then what you do, oil it a little bit. Olive oil, salt, and pepper. You with me? We're going to lay this on like some baking uh, paper here. Wax paper, baking paper, parchment paper is what I prefer. So it doesn't stick. And you're going to just slow roast it for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes in the oven like this. What's going to happen when that happens like that is this. It gets all nice and caramely like this, you see? 
That's the great thing about fennel. It gets all that natural sugar, just like onions that comes out like that. Gets nice and sweet, a little bit of that licorice. Okay, you can chop it up. You can dice it. You can do whatever you want, especially if you have your own show. <laughs> then what you're going to do is this. I like to take a little bit of red onion like this. And then I figured, hey, why not? It's a brand new year. Why not kick it up notches unknown to mankind? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I decided to use some lobster meat. little parsley like this. All right. This is a good time to go and get this terrific boat motor that you just got. And what you want to do is you want to stop pureeing it. If you want to just give it a little more creamy texture, you can add just a little bit of cream to it, like I'm going to do right here. If you want to leave it all natural, leave it all natural. Look at this, little cream. Once we get it pureed, we're going to re-season it. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish it garnish it, and then it's Tuscan bean soup. Stick around. because I got another great Tuscan bean soup that I want to show you. But look, the pea soup, after you blend it, you want to cook it in total is about an hour and 30 minutes, okay, in total. Gets it really good and simmered. After you puree it, you want to taste it. Why? Because you want to make sure if it's got enough seasoning. Maybe you want more pepper. Maybe you want more salt. Maybe you don't. Huh. All right, so this is how we're going to do it. I, I figured we're going to kick it up a little bit more and get a little another garnish in here. I got some parsley leaves I picked, no stems. Just put them right in there like that. Back up a notch. Yeah, instead of kicking it up, you back up a notch. Well, it just splatters. You can do this with a lot of leafy vegetables. Fried parsley is a big thing in New Orleans for a lot of the old... Creole, classic Creole dishes. It crisps up really quick. It's really, really tasty, too. But I'm going to move along real quick and show you how we're going to do this. As soon as it comes out, anything fried, you want to just give it a little seasoning. And this is how I would finish it. While you were going to the refrigerator doing, well, whatever, I took out the fennel. The pieces were a little big. Took the fennel out, and I just chopped it up a little bit so that they were at least the same size as this roasted fennel and lobster relish. This is how I would finish it, guys, just like this. Hey, you know, and don't be, uh, if you guys, when you're re-seasoning it, you can't obviously add more crushed red pepper in there, right? So what you want to do is you can kick it up with a little hot sauce a couple of notches like that, you know? All right. Basically, I would just sort of add the little parsley like this on that relish, and then I like to just kind of add a little bit of mystery is what I call it, mystery. Just a little bit of mystery like this around. That's how simple, a very, very simple vegetarian pea soup right there that you can do with a lobster and fennel relish, okay? All right. There's one of a wonderful canelli and white bean Tuscan bean soup, pasta fazool. Yeah. This is pasta fazool a la Toscana, right? Watch this technique. I love this. You get a little sauce pot like this, and you put some olive oil in it. I don't know if you've ever seen this technique. It's a wonderful way of flavoring it. And this particular soup in Italy, like a lot of the French soups, what they do is they, at the end, they mount it with butter. They finish them with butter. This soup, they finish it with this beautiful, delicious oil. Watch this. You get it good and hot like that, and then what they do is they take some rosemary, and they take some garlic like that, 
and just sort of cook it and fuse it, let it all come out like that and extract all the flavor. A few minutes, and that's what it looks like, just like that, after it's got that little bit of that color from the garlic and the rosemary. And then what they'll do is they'll just strain that. Now they've got this wonderful but perishable olive oil that's flavored with this rose... Oh. Put a little bit of that between your cheek and gums, Mom. So now what they do, smart people and Italians, what they do is they take this flavored oil like this now, and they start their soup like this. Watch this. They take a maripois, little onion, carrot, and celery. I decided to use a little bit of a red onion. Use whatever kind you like. You want to saute that out for about six or eight minutes. We're going to add a little bit of salt. Because I don't know where you get your maripois. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. You know what I mean? <laughs> little fresh ground pepper like this. Now, there's basically a couple of reasons why you want to soak beans. Let's face the fact, okay? Let's cut through all the beans. <laughs> basically, you can do a quick soak. You know, that's anywhere from like one to four hours. Generally using uh, where you cover it with hot water. And that's to sort of moisten the bean real quick so that it'll cook faster, okay? The other soak, as you all have heard, oh, I've soaked my beans overnight. Overnight. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> well, the reason for that is, is, you know, it's a gas thing. It's that whatever. So... Whatever turns you on, wherever you are, use your own judgment, okay? Some people like that, some people don't. Now, the other thing which amazes me, watch this. We're going to add a couple more cloves of garlic in here. This was two of those Roma tomatoes that I just pureed like that. If you want to use canned sauce, that's okay. We're going to add some of that in there right now. Then what we're going to do is this. I soak these, okay, overnight. <laughs> why? Because they were big. That's why I believe we soaked them, because these were big, and I wanted to get them tender to make the cooking time more, okay? A couple of bay leaves. Add the beans. Add some agua. That's H2O. Now, here's the thing. You bring this up to a boil. You let it simmer. You let it simmer for, well, until the beans are tender. I mean, basically what that is is after it cooks for like an hour, you grab one of these beans, Doc, and you go, is it tender or is it not? And your brain usually tells you something. <laughs> Everybody's wrapped up in this like, well, how long is this going to be for? How long is that? Hey, what do I look like, a box? <laughs> now, After it comes up, you see this right here? We're going to see right here. My friends are going to help me out over here. Fellas, grab one of them beans. They tender? Yes, yes. What would your brain mm. tell you? They're Delicious. cooked, right? Delicious. Exactly. Delicious. Now, we're going to re-season this. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to add the macaroni, how we're going to make this little liaison with the flavored oil, and guess what? We're going to catfish land after that. Stick around. <laughs> We're back, and we're just beaning out over here. I hope you didn't just join us. B is for beans tonight, boy, and let me tell you. Pasta fazool, a la Toscana, right now. We're going to finish that up. Been simmering. The beans are getting nice and tender. Got proof right here. You guys got a little soup right there, the old split pea, huh? All right. Here's what we're going to do. Before we uh, finish this, we're gonna, we know the beans are tender. 
We're going to taste the broth and see just how much flavor is in there and if we have to re-season it. This is when your brain says, I think we need more salt, or I think we need more pepper, or holy moly, let's add more water. <laughs> so we re-season it now, re-season it. And then, at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to bring out the boat motor again. But we're not going to puree this all the way down. What we're going to do is we're just going to puree like half the beans. Oh, see, one of you guys would have won like a grand prize. You got to take the bay leaves out, right? Unless you're like cooking for like the enemy. That's a new show, Doc. Cooking for the enemy. I think I'll do that one. All right, babe. Yeah, and I'll play the I'll play the skins. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna totally puree the whole thing. We're just gonna puree half of them. We're gonna break up that starch a little bit. That nice creamy flavor known for pasta fazool. And then once that happens, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some macaroni in there. Just kind of stir that up a little bit. Some people think that now is the time that you should do uh, like Parmesan cheese. A lot, a lot of people like to add Parmesan in there, but classically not. It's used uh, as a garnish with crusty bread. Look at this. Doesn't that look good? So there we go. You can garnish this with a little like green onion like this. Or even in Italy, sometimes they like to just, bam, kick it up a couple of notches just like that, you know? Now, I want to clarify something up because to allow some of the gas-causing substances, that's why they dissolve. I'm not going to be on this gas thing. I just want to clarify it. This is getting a little gassy foggy in here right now, you know what I mean? Basically, what it does is not only make the beans just to get the cooking process going, but it also eliminates that. But always, always, you always want to change that water. Always want to change that water when you soak them in. All right, let me tell you about this next thing we're going to do here. I've got some onions that I've been just lionizing over here, okay? And I don't know if we got any onion police out there, but basically what we've been doing is just sort of caramelizing these. Why? Because it's going to make the onions sweet just like it is right now, okay? Like we were doing lionese potatoes. Now, once we get them nice and caramely like this, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do another bean dish. These are black-eyed peas. I love black-eyed peas. They're also called Crowder peas. There's a lot of other names for them, predominantly in the South. Now, I cook these in a little bit of stock till they were tender. See? They were gonna crush your little bean like that. Crush. <laughs> Now, what we're going to now do is we're going to add those cooked beans like that. I've got about, oh, maybe 60 cloves of garlic in here chopped up, you know. <laughs> now, I actually seasoned the old beans first. Oh, you guys didn't want to taste the soup? Sure. You on a diet? No. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Try that one when you're done. Have a little soup combo. Thank you. Actually, you may want to... Just go right in for that. All right, here's what we're going to do. So I'm making this little bean, black-eyed pea, and Delicious. caramelized onion relish, okay? Now what we're going to do is this. I had a little bit of stock that I brought up because I'm going to kind of make them dirty now, at least what I call dirty. I'm going to add a little bit of that stock in there like this. Why? Hey, because I want to. You don't have to. So we're going to just kind of just get those nice and dirty like that. Don't try this at home. And then what you want to do is we want to go instantly over there and we want to taste these. Hey, how's that sandwich doing, buddy? How are they? Good? They're brand new. Enough M&Ms in them? Let's have a look at this thing. Check that out. Oh, man. I got to eat one of them. Doc, we got to eat one of them, Doc. All right, look. So now what we want to do is we're going to taste this. Even though I 
put seasoning in the beans when I cook the black eyed peas. Oh. Sometimes I even amaze myself. All right. Here's how we're going to finish this. I love black eyed peas. What I did is I got a little bit of crispy bacon. <laughs> Pork fat roll. I'm going to add all that crispy bacon in there. There's just something about bacon. What can I say? But what we're going to do is this. We're going to re-season it if you need to. We're going to put this on very, very low heat. And then I got some beautiful, I mean beautiful, catfish fillets. What we're going to do is we're going to season them. We're going to dredge them. We're going to start pan sauteing them. And when we come back, we're going to the moon, baby, to the moon. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. back for a minute because there's one really important thing that we talked about that delicious oil when you go and you puree half of the beans before you add the macaroni for the pasta fazool traditionally what they do is they take that oil you remember that oil that we fuse with the garlic and the rosemary not only do they add a little bit of that inside of the soup but when they actually and you've tasted that now right but when they actually go back and serve it with crusty bread like I have right here. Okay? Oh, yeah, babe. What they also do is take a little bit of that delicious oil and just drizzle a little bit like that on the top and then a little crusty bread like that. Taste the difference with that now with just the oil. I know. I'm playing with your emotions, aren't I? You need a spoon. You need a spoon? No problem. This is like a real show. Thank you. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys... See what you guys think of the same thing. It's just amazing. They get a little bit of that. They just drizzle a little bit of that instead of butter. Oh, yeah. It doesn't it make a difference, that oil? So there's a little tip for the pasta fazool. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy that oil. Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on now. Check it out, guys. You want to kick it up a notch, you can just go BAM! Just like that, just a quick little one. All right. While you were, God knows whatever you were doing, we made this unbelievable caramelized onion, black eyed pea and crispy bacon sort of relish, ragu. And then uh, while you were going to the refrigerator, God knows for what, I dredged and seasoned flour and seasoned it with some Creole seasoning or the essence, some catfish fillets and then what I'm doing now is I'm taking that let me show you this little technique because a lot of people when I talk about pan frying fish like this they absolutely freak out they go oh my god I don't know how to work a spatula that's okay no really and truly but let me show you a little tip you get the big end of the fish like this even with a tiny spatula like I got right here okay then what you can do is hold, see, this is not hot. Hold your finger right here and just let it guide like this, okay? Just let it guide it and then let it go like that inside of the pan. You don't want to get it all splatted all over the place. We're going to do this nice and crispy, all right? So, earlier when we did that wonderful split pea vegetarian soup with the incredible roasted fennel and lobster, we used some fried parsley as a garnish. So I thought since I was in the south right now, with this black eyed pea, caramelized onion, crispy bacon ragu, and crispy catfish, I said, so, why don't I just go and fry some collard greens while I'm at it too, right? Easy, they're like piranhas. 
You know, Doc, there's a better way of doing this, you know. It's gotta be. You can buy them. <laughs> oh, they're really tasty, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm tell you, you ever had fried collard no. greens? No. You fry them up like that, they take a little longer than they, like a parsnip or whatever. But what happens is they, can you smell them already? What happens is they get, like, so crunchy, and uh, the stem, you want to drain them real, real good like this. Is it going to hold a lot of oil like this? How you doing, Rhoda? Rhoda's doing great today. Oh, yeah. All right, check it out. Here's what we're going to do. This is what I would do, at least. Take a little bit of that black IP, caramelized onion, crispy bacon ragu, just like that on the bottom. You with me so far? Yeah. Then I would uh, take one of those amazing fillets of catfish like this. Want to drain it like this on there. Drain it with the oil. Set that right on that ragu like this. Then take a little bit of those crispy collard greens that we're just going to lightly salt. And then what I like to do is just kind of Add one like this, add another one like that, add one more for good luck too, why not, right Doc? And then uh, you can garnish it any way you want, I'm just going to use a little brunoise of pepper like that. That's what I call a simple dish using beans. That's what Hilda would say, using your bean, you know what I mean? All right. One of my other favorite beans in the whole wide world is black beans. And there's so many things that you can do. First of all, it's one of my favorite soups, black bean soup. You know, them frijole kind of things, right? But why not kick it up a notch? As I told you in the beginning of the show, nothing wrong with like a little black bean cake, right? Watch this. Take a little bit of olive oil. Coat the bottom like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start with a couple of onions. Once them onions cook a little bit, season it with a little bit of salt, a little pepper. Or you can kick it up a few notches with some essence. Once that cooks for about five or six minutes like this, get that flavor out of the onion. I like to use a whole jalapeno, you know, chopped up. Now, a little, uh, little tip for you, though. You know, these days, they got a lot of uh, health laws, of course, and deservingly so. To the point even right now, where even in a lot of the gourmet stores, don't laugh at this. They sell those, like, plastic doctor gloves that you can, you know, you know, okay, I'm ready for the chicken, Mom, you know. Hey, you may want to use those when you're using your, uh, when you're cutting your chilies or your jalapenos, because where the heat is is inside, where the, the little, uh, uh, white part of it where the seeds are connected, that's where all the heat is. Let me tell you, you start doing 40, 50 jalapenos like that, whoo, your hands can get pretty hot, let me tell you. So that's a little tip. I'm using the whole one. Jalapeno in there, little bit of garlic. Then, I didn't soak these turtle beans or these, these, uh, I just, I don't think so. What you, what you need is you add a bay leaf, add the black beans in there, cover them with water, and then re-season them a little bit and let them cook till they're tender. Now, the great thing about this, if we were doing a soup, if we were doing a soup, what we would do is we'd keep cooking them. If we need to add more liquid, we'd add more liquid. If we wanted to keep it like we're going to make a cake, we want to get a lot of that liquid out of there, particularly that uh, we're, we're not, obviously we're not making a soup, we're making a cake. So what happens is that just when the beans are at the right texture, Okay, we felt that, we've tasted it, right at the right texture. Now is when we're going to kick it up to make our uh, cakes. Watch this, we're going to eliminate the bay leaf. And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take half of this black beans after they're cooked. I'm going to take half of these so that I break down the starch in the black bean. But yet I don't want to puree them all because I want to have some of that texture. So what I'm going to do is puree half of that.
get all that starch going on like that, keep half of it so that I got the bean texture. But what this is going to be is sort of like the paste to keep it all together or it's going to bind it a little bit. All right. See? Because you can always add more liquid in here if you need to. Okay? Now what we're going to do is this. Oh, work with me. Please, work with me. What we're going to do is we're going to take that paste. You see how it's a pasty like that? And we're going to mix it in. And now basically what you can do is now we're going to have like two different textures. You see, the paste is going to kind of hold it together. The bean's going to give us a texture. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this. And then I said to myself, Self! How do I want to kick it up a notch? Boy, it's amazing how that voice comes back. It's just like Burger King or... Right. I'm going to add some fresh corn in this, folks. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to add some onion. There's something about raw onion with beans that just sort of like puts it like right up there with E.T., you know what I mean? All right. I'm going to season this now, re-season it. Hey, maybe you want to use a little chili. You want to use cumin. Maybe you want to kick up the heat. You want to use a little cayenne. We're going to start shaping these cakes like this, okay, as big as you want them. And we're going to bread them in a traditional breading of seasoned flour, egg wash, and breadcrumbs. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish the dish, and we're going to talk about more beans. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Imagine how much you learned about beans today, huh? I'm telling you. Watch this. Here comes the crescendo. We form those little cakes, right, guys? And I got a little oil in here. We'll get that temperature up. What we're going to do is we're going to start. You can make these ahead of time. Completely vegetarian. You want to not make them vegetarian, that's great. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world. I like to sleep with this stuff. It's called mole. Chocolate mole. Holy mole! All right, then over here. Over here, I got a little bit of onion going on like this to get it caramelized. Then I'm going to add a little bit of sweet corn, some salt and pepper. Then I've got these beautiful things, these gifts of God right here, rock shrimp. You want to season them like this so they don't come out of the ocean seasoned. Then we're going to cook those. Blast up the heat a few notches. They cook really quick. Really quick. Now, you want to be careful with these uh, black bean cakes. You want to be careful not to burn them. So this is how you can... Watch, remember I showed you the fish technique? Watch this. You just kind of put it like that. Now they're not cooked enough. It's windy out there, huh? All right, now we got this rock shrimp going on just like this. See how they're almost already cooked already. You see that? Now, what I like to do is this. I like to get the mole like this, that chocolate mole. You can buy it if you don't want to make it. Use that on the bottom of the plate. And then you get those bean cakes. What is this? See how they're nice and brown like that? They cook really, really quick. The other thing that I like to do is just when the shrimp are about ready to cook, finish cooking, I add a little bit of tomato, a little garlic like this, and some parsley. And then I like to add a little bit of the mole just like that in there, too. You see that? All right, here's how you finish it up. You take your bean cake like this, put it right on the bottom. Then what you do is you take that ragu of all that beautiful rock shrimp like this. 
You see how it's cooked? You take that like that and just add a little bit of this. And then to finish it up, you just add a little bit of color like that. Black bean cakes with mole sauce. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Emma Lugosi. See you tomorrow.